In this episode, we'll take a look at the time code and limiters on the Zoom F4 audio recorder. If you missed our overview of the Zoom F4, you might want to go back and take a look at that. You can take a look over here. And this time we'll look specifically at the limiters and the time code capabilities of the Zoom F4. First of all, limiters. What are limiters? Limiters are typically found in higher end audio recorders and mixers for film production. And what they do is they provide some level of protection in the case where your talent suddenly gets very loud. And what can often happen when you're doing digital recording is that when they get too loud, suddenly they can clip and distort. So the sound will sound very nasty and kind of have this harsh edge to it. That's what the limiters help you do is as soon as the audio gets certain to a certain loudness, it starts to pull it down some and keeps it from clipping. So that's what they're really designed to do. Now, limiters can be implemented in the digital realm or in the analog realm. And all these recorders, including the Zoom F4, have both analog and digital components. So their preamplifiers are analog. And then the audio gets converted from analog to digital. And then it's processed a little further and saved to an SD card. So you can put a limiter in, in a variety of different places and different manufacturers do that. The reason you want a limiter that's in the analog stage is that that can help clamp down any sound that gets too loud and prevent it from doing any damage once the audio, the analog audio, gets to the converter that actually converts it over to digital. If it's really, really loud in the analog stage and it's already starting to distort and then it gets to the digital converter, it's already too late. There's nothing that a limiter after the converter can do to save your audio. So that's why we're going to do a test here. And what I'm going to do is set up my microphone in kind of a typical scenario like I have here. I have a mic boom just out of the frame up here. And I'm going to set the gain level for normal dialogue levels. And what that means in practical terms is I'll have the meters hitting about minus 12 dB at the loudest parts of my speaking. And then I'll start to yell a little bit. I'm not a very good yeller and people have found this entertaining in the past. It's not intentionally entertaining, but if you enjoy that, here's your entertainment for the week. Um, and then what we're going to see is that if the, with the limiter is turned on with a, the settings set to soft me, the threshold set to minus six dB, the attack set to zero and the release set to, min to 200 milliseconds, uh, we're going to see if the audio clips and starts to distort. Check! One, two, three! So based on our test, it looks like the limiter actually is a digital limiter and not an analog limiter. So it's not necessarily going to provide you that level of protection that you would, you know, hopefully have in a high-end recorder. But I need to kind of say something here. This is not a deal breaker. Um, some people, when I talked about this in the Zoom F8, kind of cited that as a complete and utter deal breaker. Now, for certain types of projects, yes, that can be the case. But for those of us that are just doing passion projects, vlogs, uh, anything where we're not getting paid, you can still make very, very good recordings with the Zoom F4 and the Zoom F8, even if you only have a digital limiter. And it's really only if, I think a couple of scenarios. Number one, if you're doing something like uh, reality TV where you don't have a lot of control over how loud the talent are suddenly going to get. Um, if you, or, or some other scenario like that. Sometimes people say horror movies can be whispers up to screams. Um, uh, those kind of things, maybe you do need a limiter. But for the majority of us doing interviews and things of that nature, if you set your gain right, this is not going to be an issue anyway. So it's not, I wouldn't call it a deal breaker. I just think it's something good to understand and know. And for a $650 device with four microphone inputs of this grade, which are very, very good, um, along with all the other features in this recorder, I wouldn't really expect to have analog limiters. So I'm not disappointed. I want to convey that. <laughs> it was just a test to see if they had changed that from the Zoom F8 to the F4. And it doesn't look like they have changed it as far as I can tell. So it's just something you need to keep in your mind and you need to probably ride your gain a little bit lower so that you have more headroom in case your talent does get a little bit louder. Now on to time code. The Zoom F4 has a temperature compensated crystal oscillator. What that means in practical terms is that it's a highly accurate clock inside the device that can adapt itself to different temperatures. And it's often temperature that actually affects the accuracy of clocks. So this one's specially designed to manage a wide range of temperatures. Our test is gonna be pretty simple here. We're just going to do it at room temperature. 
what is time code, first of all? Well, time code is what allows you to record your audio separate from your camera and then be able to sync them very simply in post-production. And what I mean by that is you'll have a time code clock that's highly accurate in your audio recorder, a time code clock that's accurate either in or attached to your camera. Um, both of them will record time code. And then when you get to post, all you have to do is tell your nonlinear editor application to line the two up and it will do it very quickly and easily. So that's the big thing about time code. Time code is very common on professional productions um, where you want to operate the audio separately to get higher quality audio with a very with a high quality dedicated audio recorder like the Zoom F4 and um, and operate separate, not tethered to your camera. So it's a very common thing in pro world and it's starting to become more affordable. As you can see in the Zoom F4, for example, um, the time code looks pretty good. Let's do a test here. What I did in this test is I connected a tentacle sync to the time code output of the Zoom F4 to jam sync the tentacle sync time code clock, which is a separate clock that you normally would hook up to your camera. Once the two of them were in sync, I then took the tentacle sync and adapted it and actually sent its signal, which is an audio signal, into the first input on the Zoom F4. Then I recorded for eight hours. And after eight hours of recording, I brought the file into the Tentacle Sync Studio app on my computer. And I was able to, to compare the time code of the two, both from the Zoom F4 and from the Tentacle Sync. And what I found was that they were both on the same exact frame. So while they had drifted a couple of milliseconds, they were still on the same exact frame. So what that indicates to me is that the time code clock in the Zoom F4 is really quite good. Now you might ask, well, how good is the tentacle sync clock? Well, we've also did some tests on that with my sound device's 633, and it also did a similar type thing. It was within the same frame, and it was off by a few milliseconds after five and a half hours of recording. So it looks like the Zoom F4 has a pretty solid time code clock, at least in regular room temperatures. Again, this entire episode was recorded with the Zoom F4 and an Audio-Technica AT4053B microphone so that you can hear exactly what it sounds like. This will be our, this is the kind of the second episode we've done on the Zoom F4. We'll wrap it up in a couple of weeks with the final review of the F4. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you get yourself subscribed and we will talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.